You ready? Ready for your call? Are you ready for what? What do you mean? Are you ready? You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to order? Are you ready to proceed? Are you ready? 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 Are you ready to go? Are you ready? Yeah! Are you ready? 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 Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Are you ready for some dessert? Are you ready for our dance? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready yet? Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, are you ready? Are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to begin? Are you ready to fight? Are you ready to work with me now? Are you ready to proceed? Are you ready to order here? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Now are you ready? Are you ready, boys? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for me? Are you ready to meet the courier? Are you ready to do this? Are you ready to turn the corner? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Are you ready? 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 to order. Is everyone ready now, Jack? Are you ready? Are you ready to rejoin the class, Michael? Are you ready for this one? Are you ready to see him? Are you ready? I've been counting the days. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Oh, gentlemen, as I said, are you ready? Are you ready to get back to work? You ready for this? Let's find out. Now, are you ready to go to work? Are you ready for this? It's, uh, Real circus. Are you ready for war? Are you ready for that question? Are you ready? Are you ready to do your duty for Rome? And, well, are you ready? To fight, to kill, to take life? I am. So are you ready? Yeah, hold on. Are you ready? Yeah, sorry, I'm ready. Are you ready for a war? We are in business together. We are in serious trouble. We are in the guest house. We are in love. We are in a very different situation than we were this morning. We are in an uncontrolled revolutionary situation. We are in the middle of a battle that's a trillion years in the making and it's bigger than the both of us. Now we are in business. We are in hell. We are in a cage. We are in such a pickle. We are in position. We are in the preliminary stage. We are in a war, Mr. Brown, against a ruthless and tricky enemy who will stop at nothing to destroy our way of life. So now is the time for our prayer warriors to rise up because we are in a war. We are in this war. That's not an option. Behind all the human forces, there are angelic forces, both angels of God and angels of Satan, that are at work. And human history is to be explained by the interplay of all these forces. Now, why we are significant as Christians is because God has given to us the weapons by which we can intervene in this spiritual war. Governments have armies and weapons that deal with other nations. But only the Christian church has the weapon that will intervene in the spiritual realm in the heavenlies. And you understand, the one who wins in the heavenlies ultimately determines the course of history. So the most significant thing you can do in history, in a sense, is be an intercessor and pray through the spiritual issues in the heavenlies that will determine the history of nations on earth. If you're part of the kingdom of God, you are at war with the kingdom of Satan. That's not something you can decide. You just better learn how to fight, because if you don't, you're going to be a casualty. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are live officially. We had to, uh, yes, Jade Victoria Stock is on. This is going to be good. All right, so we are going to drive at something today, which is long overdue. Um, title alone should kind of give you a perspective. Um, God's version of peace is violent. We, we all claim it, we want it, we ask for it, we think we understand, we think we can process, and the answer is no, we don't. There's, there's a lot more to this than what, um, what we have in store. And so if we're going to dive into this, Heavenly Father, we love you, we trust you, we need you. In Jesus' name, we pray that you are actively pushing us, driving us, searching our hearts, you're cleansing and washing us. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over people tonight. I pray that they have ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to understand. Lord, that when your word is read out loud, it releases something supernatural into the natural the heart supernatural ears father everything about these people will be transfigured and transformed because your word changes everything so father we embrace you holy spirit we need you like never before we we need you to give people perspective and understanding to quell the hearts the fear put all the the, the worries and trials of the world aside we're going to drive at something father because you've 
You keep your men hidden for a time until you have them emerge. And Father, I declare that your people are emerging onto the scene, onto the reality of what's around us. And we're going to embrace your word like never before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, <clears throat> it's, I, like, I myself had to pray over this stuff. Um, we have to understand that we, we try and frame God into boxes of our own understanding. It's probably... It's probably our, our biggest detriment. And I'm not saying that all of us do it, but there's a lot of people who have never been taught to embrace God at his word, to take him at face value. And there are things that we have to process in a way that give God all the glory, all the honor. And it puts us to a back seat as far as what we want. And humans are predictable. We want comfort. We want peace. We want ease. We want to be satiated. Oh, wait a second. What's Facebook doing? Facebook is not allowing us to stream. Look at us get like, go to news, this content isn't available. Apparently people have been commenting on Facebook. Sorry, I'm just like getting this weird pop up as we pop in and do a thing. And sure enough, are we live? We're not live. Something happened. Oops. All right, so we're not live on Facebook tonight. So it is what it is. We got to do our thing anyways. Um, the more that we drive at these things, right? Like God is going to use us and he's going to, um, he's going to illuminate things. Sorry, getting distracted. So for all those people out there in the interwebs that are saying like, you know, something, God wouldn't give us hard times. God won't appoint us to wrath. Your version of wrath is not my version of wrath. Your version of a bad day is not my version of a bad day. Your version of stress and chaos and disorder they're not my version. And my version isn't even as bad as other people's. And so within that, we need to actually process the fact that we might end up narrowing God into a box of our own design, narrowing him into a narrative of our own perspective, narrowing God into a small corner of our own theological ability to reason and, and logically then articulate what we've learned and what we've discovered of God. And so you guys get it. I don't need to like beat, beat, you know, the dead horse, but to the best of our ability, we're going to try and drive at a, a topic today. That's, you know, I've, I've got a lot of scripture to get through, especially with John. Um, but I, I want to make sure that we, we understand something. We're going to start the word of God with uh, a verse, John 14, verse 27, peace. I leave with you. My peace I give to you. It's both left and it's given to those that love Christ, not as the world gives it, do I give to you? Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So if you are ever on the end of seeking out worldly peace, I I hope for world peace. That's not what God told you to hope for. We're supposed to reach for the things of Christ. He leaves it behind because he left, and then he gives it freely to those that call on him, not as the world gives. So even in your understanding of you know, someone would say, I want peace in the Middle East. I pray for the peace of Israel. I pray for Israel to be in peace. I pray for that whole region to be in peace. I pray for peace in general because most people are not ready to even navigate the idea of war. And so this is going to punch a lot of people in the face. Um, so as as we go through this, uh, listen, I, I'm, I'm hoping to God that, that this ministers, that this, this conveys something and that the Holy Spirit and Jesus is glorified. Um, first, in order of business, G9 defense, go there. There's some freedom seeds up there, some factory seconds. You will like the price of, you will want to get that as, as soon as possible. I think they were already running out of like nine mil, but just saying. All right, we got a bunch of comments. Um, so John 14, 27 was a verse. And then here's the quote, and I can't find the person who originally quoted it. You have no, you have no idea how much violence it took to become this peaceful. None. Think about that. You have no idea how much violence it took to become this peaceful. You have no idea how much, no one else around you has any idea how much violence you had to go through in order to seek and attain peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. 
right? It's your own mental piece. It's emotional piece. It's philosophical piece where you're at peace with just the understanding that you have. It's intellectual piece where you feel like you're not being deceived and you're not getting the short end of reality. And then but the, the spiritual piece is really what we're trying to seek. Why? Because what we really want is significance. We want to obtain peace, a peace, potentiate pleasure, right? So like pleasure is this thing that we think by virtue of going through pleasure and experiencing it, we can get peace. It's not always the case because then all of a sudden you have an insatiable appetite for things. And so you realize like, wait a second, what am I after again? Yeah, it's peace of God. And I want to I wanna give us a high level as to exactly what that piece looks like, what it sounds like. And so by the time we're done, God willing, we would have covered a lot of, a lot of scripture. Um, I got audio issues on Instagram. Yeah, listen, if you're on Instagram and you want to hear things or see things, if you want to jump over to YouTube, everything's going to be much better, by the way, much better. The whole audio, visual, everything's better. Um, okay, so we're going to keep going. What's a be be sleep. Uh, we go forward. Which saying? Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Jade Stark, King of Heaven, suffers violence. The violent take by force. Amen. Uh, Deed will. Jade, what's that verse? Marlene, it's Matthew eleven twelve. It's a banger. All right, we're gonna keep going. Just we go. Wait, everything we have all gone through has made us ready for this time. Amen. Yeah, and there's more to come. Okay. We're going to go at verses high level. Then we got videos. We got all sorts of stuff. So we're trying to make this go as fast as possible. Isaiah 57, 11. And of whom have you been afraid or feared that you have lied and not remembered me, nor taken it to your heart? Is it not because I have held my peace from of old that you do not fear me? And this is getting back to the peace of God is violent. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding is violent. And we have no idea how much time it took for us to get to this place. And then we think that God is, you know, some people think God isn't there because he's allowing evil things to happen. God is, he is taking stock of everything that is going on, that's happening. And it's like, you know, we, we, we pray for the anguish of God because we want to have a sense of what God is going through, what he's feeling. And, and why do we want that? Because we want to know what's the right thing to pray for. How can we keep going at this? And so think about that. I'm going to read Isaiah 57, 11 again. And of whom have you been afraid or fear that you have lied and not remembered me? So think about this in the modern sense, right? Isaiah 57 was written a long time ago, about 2,700 years ago. Think about it right now. Can we not look to society and culture around us and say, uh, and whom have we been afraid or feared? The government, COVID. Like we've been afraid of all these stupid things that we've lied about what we're afraid of and we don't remember God. We don't remember what he's capable of, what he does. Nor taking it to heart. We don't take God to heart. We take things that we love and like and want to you know, deal with and think of to heart. And then this last, that last person, this verse, is it not because I have held my peace from old that you do not fear me? And the answer is, God, yes. It is because you've, you've withheld your peace from old. Judges 7. This is Gideon. And everyone loves to talk about Gideon defeated a hundred and some odd thousand soldiers, which has 300 men, and he didn't even have to fight. Do you understand that he pursued the army even after that angelic situation happened? And they 300 men killed 15,000 Midianites. 300 men says that they were routed. And then he goes to two cities, Sukkoth and Penuel. S, sorry, Sukkoth. Sukkoth. S-U-C-C-O-T-H and then Penuel. And Penuel means where you go to see God's face, where you, where you go to see the face of God. Penuel is the place where Jacob wrestled with God. And so we're going to read Judges, Judges 8, verse 7 and 8 and 9. So Gideon said, For this cause, when the Lord has delivered Zeba and Zalmunna, the two princes of the Midianites, into my hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. That was Sukkoth. And then he went up from there to Penuel and spoke to them in the same way. And the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Sukkoth has answered. So he also spoke to the men of Penuel, saying, When I come back in peace, I will destroy I will tear down this tower. And if you think about this, he's talking to his own countrymen. He's talking to the elders of both of those cities. 
Think about the elders that we have in high places. Think about the churches, the church elders. Think about societal elders, political elders. And they're thinking like, oh, everything's just law and order. It's honky dory. And, you know, even if we, you know, go against our people, even if we wrong them and we, you know, steal from them and we commit treason, they're not going to do anything to us because they're civilized people. And, you know, there's a judicial system and there's a legal system and it's failed. And so what does Judges 8 remind people of? People in high places and high power and authority, people that, that society and culture esteem. Don't get too comfortable. I should probably start playing with the ammo if I hear that. Don't get too comfortable. If you get too comfortable, what happens? We're, we're going to miss the opportunity to actually work on behalf of God. Oh, cool. Sheepdog for you. There's no audio issues. Awesome. So as we go through this, we're going to, Ju- just jump through the notes, but please, like the the perspective is this: God's peace is violent. His peace of old is violence. What He did instantly, uh, even to His own people, even to the children of Israel that were next to us, everything. There's just a God. I wish you knew. There's more to it, and the peace that Christ brings. Right, His yoke is easy. Right, it's 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 peace that surpasses all understanding. It's multifaceted. It's not the peace that we are always seeking. It's something of a heavenly portion, heavenly condition. We keep going. Matthew six twenty four. It's you can't serve two ma- masters. You must love one and hate the other. So why, if we love the Prince of Peace, why does he say you must hate the other master? Wait a second. Th- wait, peace, peace of God, isn't that the same as human peace? So if we're at peace, we we don't hate anyone. We love everyone. God's peace is not our peace. Like we're trying to ev- you know elevate you to a place of 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 spiritual understanding, and this has to be between you and God. Listen, this message, what we're doing, spiritual warfare, is for everyone. Ephesian armor. How many people say like I put on the armor every day? You're never supposed to take it off. You're supposed to die in it. And some people are like, no, but like, you know, we wrestle not. It's like, focus, don't focus on what we don't wrestle against. Focus on what you wrestle against. And so if you're a person out there that says that you put on the armor and we wrestle not, and so then you wrestle, tell me how many, how many days a week you wrestle principalities and powers, rules of darkness, hosts of wickedness. How many days do you go out and intercede in prayer on behalf of other people? Never? Only when you're attacked? High five. It's in, intensely convenient, extremely convenient of you to only do the things that are short and not, listen, people that are watching this, right? You guys are awesome. You guys, I see the notes. I'm trying to like chime in. I just, I'm, again, spiritual understanding comes with this. You know, you got so many people that are in our faith-based community, especially in America, that just think that it's great. Listen, it's, we are barely barely getting by with food on the shelves. They're trying, they've destroyed almost 2,000 food processing facilities in the last couple of years. They're introducing cricket proteins and Bill Gates is taking over farmland, which, you know, can never be good. And so when I pray for the peace of Israel, high level, God has the authority and autonomy to usher in peace by whatever means he desires, to let peace exist by whatever conditions he desires, not my will, but his. And so just because we don't see peace that we can somehow sign off on, what if the Middle East right now is the most peaceful it's ever going to get right now? Why do I say that? Because this is going to get worse and worse and worse and more and more violent. And so just as much as we think like, oh, rockets are being sent. Oh my gosh, the Palestinians, they're being tormented. And Israel, it's only been a nation since 1948. Even the Quran mentions Israel over and over again, which means Israel's older than the Quran. It's, it's like our version of peace can't just be to pray for our own human perception of peace. It has to be larger than that. Matthew 10. You know, Matthew 6, 24 is banger. Matthew 10 was huge, right? It's when God and Jesus sent out the disciples. I'm going to read this part. Actually, it's, it's, it's important. It's like a build up. And yes, here we actually read the, the word of God on a pretty regular basis. We try that. I'm going to try it sometime. I'm going to try it. It's kind of cool. It's cool, man. It's cool. Just lay him down, smack him, jack him. Cole got to be, you know. I'm not going to say that last part. Any of you airplane fans out there, you also speak jive. All right, chapter 10, 
and when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. How many people think that demons think that Jesus' peace is peaceful? That's nonviolent. No, it's violent. If you're evicting demons out, if you're causing sickness to go, when people love to identify as their infirmity, when people love to identify as you know, their trauma, they would love to identify as their story as what they've been through. And God's like, no, I'm bringing you higher above those things. And so we can't even love to identify as those things. And society wants to medicate you and coddle you to say, you should identify as your trauma, as all the things that have prevailed over you. That's what you, that's what your identity is. And Christ is saying, let those things die. Because where you're going and where, where we're heading as a body of Christ and then ultimately in heaven, your trauma, your disease, those things don't exist in heaven. And when we get to Revelation 21, you're going to understand why. It's a ton of notes we're going to go through. A ton. Now, the names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, who's called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, his son, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we go all the way through. And then Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, do not go into the ways of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Israel was ministered to first. God wanted the Jews to have the truth first. In his wisdom, for whatever reason, God chose the Israelites, the Jews, because they were the least of all the people in all the earth. It's an underdog story. The Bible is not telling us we're going to have all the numbers and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a party. No, it's going to be bad. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts. Nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs. For a worker is worthy of his food. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy and stay there till you go out. So when you go evangelizing, do you belligerently, recklessly just say, I'm going to talk to a hundred people about Jesus today? Or do you actually go in and say, like, who's worthy? Who's actually worthy of hearing this? Do not cast your pearls among swine. I'm not saying to not evangelize. I'm saying now more than ever before, Pray and ask God, who do you want to receive the word and receive the truth? We got to look at this stuff like it's completely relevant today, which, which it still totally is. And when you go into a house household, greet it. If the household is, un, is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. And surely I say to you, it will be more tolerable. There's a setup coming. Bear with me. We're in Matthew 10, by the way. Tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So think about that. All the places that hate God, if you're assigned to it and you're called to it, you got to go. If not, you don't have to go there. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men. For they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in the synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Now brother will deliver up brother to death and father his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. He who endures to the end will be saved. This has to sink in. Not he who is raptured first is saved. Not he who gets a hall house out is saved. Not he who hits the eject button and barely makes it out is saved. He who endures to the end is, is saved. When they persecute you in the city, flee to another. Not just stay there and be martyred. For surely I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and also a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? 
Therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, which means like whatever I tell you in the places that, you know, I'm calling you to speak them out. You go to a prayer closet, speak on it. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to deliver both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows, by the way, it means bodies in hell. Soul and body in hell. Is that terrifying? It's kind of terrifying. Just think about that for a second. Which means there are bodies that are down there, not just souls and spirit. I'm just saying, like, Tartarus is a place. Sheol is a, a real, viscerally real place. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will, but the very hairs of your head are numbered. Do not fear, therefore, for you are more valuable than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will tell also, him I will also confess before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my father who is in heaven, which means if you if you deny your faith in front of other people, even though you have it, it's not good for you. And this is where it hits. And I really hope that you are, are seasoned hold of this, like I really do. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. So when you feel like you are praying for God's peace, we just serve Jesus because he's peaceful. And I love peace. How awesome will it be? People mugging themselves based on their trauma. Oh, so I'm reading notes on Instagram. Every time I listen to your, to your lives, I'm challenged to my core to press deeper. Amen. Uh, I evangelized a great Muslim man today. My son's basketball coach doing bad on a respirator. Wanted him to have a chance to be saved. His last breath, praying and receive the message. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray and lift up that Muslim man that Charlie Carbone TV on Instagram prayed for. Father, may he find faith. Um, if you're on Instagram, by the way, it's easier for me to see all the comments and stuff on on YouTube. Um, listen, this is the part where we're not trying to overemphasize violence ever, and we're going to find out when we we're going to talk about Solomon for a second in a little bit. I just I, I'm going to read this part again because again. God's peace is violent. God's peace is violent. There's a violent uprooting of conventional normality and processing everything that that some people might not conventionally appreciate in the sense of like, I just want to live in peace. I just want to love everyone. Yes, Jesus tells us to love. But come on, at this point, we have to take the stuff seriously. Yeah, everyone goes through hell and everyone goes back to their maker. I kind of think that. That's you have to clarify that. All right, we're going to go uh, keep going. I'm going to read this part again. Do, do not think that I came to bring peace. This is Jesus' words. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. He who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. The reward of of seizing hold of the things of heaven is, is so far above our pay grade. But there are so many things that we have to process and there are things that might cost us. We might have to let go of conventional earthly understanding of things and and reach hold for heavenly understanding of things. Richard, this isn't this is not it's not just a Jesus channel. 
sacrifice all for him. Can God make a rock that even he can't lift? If so, would that mean God is not powerful? He can't lift the rock? Yeah. I don't know why that comment existed. Anyways, um, we're going to keep going. John 14. And this is this is the big piece um, that we get to it. Uh, and I started with it. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled. Um, we can start from the top because this this needs to become like a prayer for all of us. Like this needs to become something that we are standing on. And we're going to read the word of God again. Is that not a mod in here? Uh, there might be. Why? What am I supposed to mod out? Do I have to go back to the notes and start booting people? God's love is unconditional. How we respond to it, though, is conditional. Is Terry just dropping like soft love comments? Is this another Jesus channel? Richard Dugans? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. All right, I'm good at this. This world is the hell God is talking about? No, it's not. Terry, That's this is not at all the... Okay, I'm going to post this comment. Earth, what we experience as Earth, is not the hell God is talking about. If you think so, man... You are high on your own religious supply because that's not in the Bible at all. <laughs> hey, Richard, if you keep landing on God's channels, maybe there's something here. Our minds cannot begin to grasp the power and glory of our Lord. He will turn with the sword of his tongue and all enemies vanquish. Andy Curtis. And so the world in a blink of eye. Okay, how are we going to keep going? All right, John 14. And and this is why I'm going to read the whole thing just to get to verse 27. We have a couple more things after that. This is this is how deeply it goes. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Think about how many people out there who are saying, I believe in God. I'm a spirit being. I'm a light bringer. There's a God. Go further. Like, go further. Because you're, you're not all the way there. There are billions upon billions of roads to Jesus. There's only one way to God. And that is offensive. It's offensive to so many people, and we don't care. In my father's house are many mansions. This is the part that I can't stand. If you focus on the mansions, why? Why would you do that? Just focus on the work. But this is what Jesus said. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have not told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Think about these profound statements that he makes. And he's trying to explain it in a way that these people can understand. Of course, these parables have withstood the test of time. But then we all of a sudden look at this. We're like, wait a second. Why, how, did, how do all these things lead up to peace I leave with you? My peace I give you, not as the world gives you. Why is God's peace violent? We keep going. If you had known me, you would have known my father, and also from now, now on, you would know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father, and it is sufficient for us. So how much does that reflect in so many other people? God, just show us. Jesus, show us the father, show us God, and it'll be sufficient. Show us the things that you speak of. How many people are outside of faith and haven't done the work and put in the reps? And they're like, just show us. Show us the thing and we'll believe. And we don't we don't even need to have faith. We'll just believe what we see. And of course, faith comes by hearing the word of God, but faith is the evidence of things unseen. Things hoped for. Car estimate or God peace is violent. If you go back to the beginning, you're probably jumping on the live. See, every now and then, this is this is the fun part, right? Like he, we get these comments that drop in, and no harm to you. Um, you know, I just go back to the beginning, and you'll read the whole thing, and maybe you'll arrive at the same place. If not, this is not for you. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> Jesus said to him, "Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip?" He who has seen me has seen the father so how can you say show us the father do you not believe that i am in the father and the father in me the words that i speak to you 
I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So he's saying, listen, you can believe me because you believe in the Father, and here I am, or believe the works for the sake of themselves. Belief is a thing. God needs us to believe. He needs our faith. Belief is everything. And this is where it gets gangster. And this is why it's so important that John 14 is just this thing that expounds on so much. That's why, again, like we need to understand this and press in and realize that there's some things that we cannot conclude until God reveals them to us. And even then, we still have to leave it open to what God wants to do. Lily Bloom, God is not violence. Us humans are violent and rebellious. We want to live in our own ways without consequence. All right, Lily, bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Are you about to lose your job? Because you are detaining me for nothing. <laughs> Isaiah 45. I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no God beside me. I will gird you though you have not known me. That they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting, that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Lily, tell me again why God is not violence. Tell me again how your statement is in line with the word of God. You can say you don't like violence. That's fine. God gives us the the autonomy to like and dislike things. You can say you personally don't partake or engage in violence. That's 100% fine. You can tell me that you perceive God as being all loving and all kind and all peaceful without any form of violence, and you are free to choose and believe whatever you want to. You are also free to be wrong. You are free to be incorrect. Oh, got it. I just said that because the person who just stated that God's peace is violence. God's peace is violent. It is not violence. God's peace is violent. It, God's peace, when I say that, it's violently abrupting us. I need spiritual advice. It's crazy. All right, we're taking that one off. See, I start reading comments and I filter myself out. Are we going forward? Just to follow up on Lily's comment. Okay, the violence of God is for a purpose. The, the violence of God is always for a purpose. The violence of God is always there. And because of that, you know, it's a thing. So this guy, though, I'm going to ban that guy and delete it. We delete people, by the way. We have to keep this chat as PG as possible. Sometimes we don't get PG. We are living the last days, the last days. Church as a whole is later to see in. Amen. But the last days can be decades. Just so everyone understands the timeline of God. This, this is wild. Okay, in the time of Noah, the transition time between when Noah was born and when you know his full ministry came into effect when the flood started was 120 years. Time of Moses, 40 years. Time between, we're going we're gonna to speak on this so many times that this just becomes a talking point for you and other people. Time between uh, Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, and of course, Matthew, the, the, the first book of the New Testament, is 400 years between Malachi and John the Baptist. And then the ministry of Christ, God incarnate arrived on earth and played as low key under the radar for 30 years. It's a transitionary period of the Bible. 2020, we here at the Fourth Watch have a pretty acute understanding that the church age ended and we are in the transition into the kingdom age. And so when we say that, yes, there's still churches around. Yes, the Holy Spirit is still here. The Holy Spirit never leaves. If you think the Holy Spirit is a restrainer, you are high on someone else's supply. The Holy Spirit is not the restrainer. If you think that the four-walled church is the restrainer, half, at least half of the four-walled church is not going to make it into heaven. Jesus himself gave us parables. If you think that um, the last days of the last days is going to potentially last you know, a few weeks or a few months, a few years, I would say keep dreaming in years, planning months, working in weeks, and give your days to God. 
because there's a chance that we could be looking at this for decades. Jubilee cycles and seasons, there's so much stuff behind that, which we're not going to get into. But listen, if if you want to believe that this is the last days of the last days, that's cool. This is absolutely Laodicean church. It's the last church in Revelation. And yeah, there's a lot there. God is supreme authority, supreme violence. Him not, <laughs> him not using it is his grace. In your honest opinion, he sent the flood and said never again. He gave us free will. Amen. And think about it. God, even in the Old Testament, was about to knock off his old people, and Moses had to convince him otherwise. Christ was 100% violent, yet necessary, and came from his love for us. Amen. This is peace that we don't understand. The Bible says God is love and God is wrath, but we are not supposed to be. Okay, so Thomas Quint, just to clarify, there are only four times in the Bible it says God is love. Only four times. What does it focus on? God is Lord. It says that God has the wine cups of wrath and fury and trembling. And we are not supposed to be vessels of that, but God, in fact, creates vessels of wrath and vessels for destruction. Uh, God isn't violent. He is just vengeful. God's girl, if that's how you want to see it, it's probably semantics, but in his justice and vengeance, yes, he puts on vengeance as a cloak. I uh, say that for the guys that God's peace is violence. We're going to keep going. Righteous violence. Yes, no distractions. That's exactly why I can't listen and read comments. Focus on the words. Amen. Romans 4, 6, 14. For sins shall not be your master because you are now in love of grace. I think that's relevant. And I said, thank you, God. If, it wasn't, if he wasn't a God of vengeance, Palestine would be all flowers and rainbows. Yeah, 100%. Uh, yes, he's a lamb. How do you know it was 400 years? She's, okay, God's girl. How do you know it was 400 years? Go, go Google. Go pick out books from like the last 200 years that break down the, the chronology of the books of the Bible and when they were written and when scholars believe they were written. God is not loving roses. God is wrath. You're not supposed to live in anger or fear. Whatever you're called to do is your calling. Amen. Uh, we ain't decades from Jesus' second coming. As soon as National Sunday Sabbath law is forced by church and state uniting then it's a wrap and it's in the works right now that's that's not a wrap it's not a wrap listen i and david Ryan, i'm not i'm not mad at you having that position you're free to think whatever you want to the first time that jesus came the religious elite pharisees the sadducees they got it wrong second time jesus comes we're all pretty darn convinced that we're going to get it right i don't know if that's the case so so what if this what if the national sunday sabbath law right what if that's meant to you know be a reminder that hey we should probably get our house in order yeah what what if that should be a reminder like hey things are gonna get hard yeah what if our version of wrath that we think is difficult is nowhere near what god actually has in store yet what cynthia case reminds us there will be a remnant uh to reminder sorry i'm going through comments and we'll jump back in how do you know you're going to heaven 100%. I don't. I live each day like rents do. And so I'm going to do the work and give God a reason to keep me around. And if he ends up sending me somewhere else, so be it. That's on him. It's not on me. If God wasn't angry, God was able to be rocked by flooding after mugging God. Amen. Yeah. God gets violently angry. Uh, please <laughs> don't smoke crack. It's whack. Uh, and also equip your children to work natural. Amen. Uh, do, 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 or we're going to be done with comments in a second. God is a loving father, but he is an angry and jealous God. Amen. God commands. Yep. And he is worthy to be praised. Amen. What Jesus went through was violent and God was pleased. Amen. Sorry. What scripture is that in? Sorry. I missed that. I don't know what part you're talking about, Dina. Sorry. Uh, do, do, do. Can you live a lustful life and go to heaven? My friend says you can. I struggle to agree. What is it? Revelation 21. Did I just read this? Stand by. We're going to read it at the end, but I'll jump there right now. Just so we have an understanding. Just because I'd like to answer these comments for Rip. Revelation 21. To the end, verse 8. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderous, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars shall have their part in the lake of which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, Rip, to answer your question, you cannot live a lustful life, in this case, and go to heaven, if that lust 
which most likely it is, is tied to sexual being sexually immoral. Now, can you struggle? And it says you can. I struggle to agree. Your struggle to agree is correct. Your struggle to agree is 100% correct. Are we going to keep going on? I explained John 21, 25. I don't get it. Not faith. We'll have to come back in a different time because I'm trying to drive at what we're trying to drive at. And if you're on Instagram, by the way, making comments. Uh, does that make so much sense? It helps me so much. The church age ending. Okay, we're gonna, sorry, we're going to keep going. If you're making comments on Instagram, by the way, it's difficult for me to see like all the screens. So uh, YouTube is probably going to be like your best, your best bet. Um, we, so it's an idea. Amen. All right. This, good Lord, you people are commenting. Praise God. All right. And do you believe that God made man out of clay approximately 6,000 years ago? That's what the word of God says. And you cannot raspberry jam from you and your disbelief and pray that changes. Amen. I'm an atheist, says raspberry jam. I mean, for now, give it time. You'll probably change your mind. I'm just saying. Uh, Barb's caught alive. That's great. Ephesians 5, 2, and walk in love just as Christ. Jesus gave himself up for us. His fragrant sacrificial offering. We do walk in love, but we also remind people that hell's real. Jesus advised us to buy gold from him. What does that look like? Oh, buy gold. Like buy the things that are precious from God. The things that you deem as precious, they're not. Amen, Jordan. All right. We're going to keep going. Sorry. Got distracted. You guys distracted me. I am distracted. I'm back. And this is the cool part. Verse 12, Matthew or John 14, 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. So again, when we pray, he gave us the, the format for prayer that we pray. My, you know, my father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That kingdom come, that will be done. And we pray in the name of Jesus. And we do that. Oh, God, another element that just happened to catch my eye. Terry, I swear to God, this world is hell. And God is talking about. You can swear to whatever you want to. It doesn't make it so. Just because you are convinced of a thing does not actually make it a thing. So good luck with that. All right, the point we're trying to make. So why would Jesus tell us that all these things and more we're going to do in his name? Why why would he tell us? Why would he tell us that we're supposed to carry on in a way that exceeds him? Why would he tell us that? Oh God. Now Terry's saying that God told him. God never spoke of hell. Jesus did. Read the word. God created it. Why would he have to speak of something that he created? Jesus did plenty of times, and Jesus is God. So technically, your statement's actually factually incorrect. Uh, all right, we're going to keep going. Oh, I see everyone's showing Terry love. Yeah, it's Sheil. Okay, so this, this is the point that we're talking about. If we think about this, right, if, if God's peace is violent, and Jesus is saying all these things and more you're going to do, so as violence pours out, God reminding the world, is it not because I've withheld my peace of old that you don't fear me? So as God's peace pours out and the method by which he does to express that peace, God wants us on display doing all the things that Jesus did and more that we will do in his name. How amazing is that? God has got to balance and order. So as things and calamity picks up spiritually, God wants us to be on the offensive and on display. And whatever you ask in my name that I will do, well, sorry, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be inside of you. All right, so our bodies are human vessels. We are vessels of spiritual domain. And we have our spirit. God, God's given us our spirit. As we accept Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in. And how amazing is this? That spirit drives out other spiritual contagion within us. Deliverance happens as the Holy Spirit comes in and we give them more real estate to walk around and move. Um, it's so cool because this is like the natural process. So, so many people are like, we're striving against sin. No, we're not. At least we shouldn't be. Like when sin comes to, you know, ensnare us and entangle us when demons try and entice us 
if we just try and maintain a defense, we're not allowing Jesus inside of us, the Holy Spirit inside of us to actually do the work. When demons come in to attack us, we're supposed to step aside and let Christ do the work within us. We're not trying to hold on so tight and strive over these things. And so this is this is going to be such a good thing to do as as we go forward is understand like Christ wants to do a new work in us. We are dead and alive in Christ. And so the Christ in me is the one that's actually engaging these things. And so think about this. If we love Jesus, we keep his commandments and he will pray in the Father. He will give us another helper, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Verse 19, a little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. And they're like, Jesus, what are you talking about, man? Because I live, you will live also. That At that day, you will know that I am my Father, and you and me, and I and you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Not self-manifestation. Jesus manifests himself to us, his people. Judah said to him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not be to the world? And not to the world. Jesus answered to him and said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home within him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the world the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. So it's basically saying, like every question about the father is redirecting back to the word and keeping commandments and having the spirit dwell inside of you. And then this is where it gets awesome. These things I've spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I said to you. So God speaks to us through his word. So as you read the word and absorb the word, the Holy Spirit brings these things to remembrance. And here we are. Oh, there's just a lot of going back and forth. Um. And so how cool is that? Like, we don't even have to try that hard to remember these things. The Holy Spirit will actually, you know, bring these things to remembrance. And this is where it comes in, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives peace do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So Joshua 1, 9, have I not commanded you, do not be afraid nor dismayed. And then we have all the way here, verse 28. Sorry, verse 27. Let not let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is instruction. Instruction. This is instruction. Do you read the word to just kill time? Do you read it to just still do your own thing? Or do you read it to be instructed? It's a whole different level that we approach this. We want to be instructed. So I am instructed to not be troubled, that my heart will not be troubled, and I will not be afraid. So my heart can be in trouble, like troubled and afraid. I am not supposed to let it. The Bible just told you, do not allow your heart to be troubled. He's this Brian person. Sorry, these 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 comments are going back and forth. Um, all right, we're gonna keep going. You have heard me say to you, I'm going away and coming back to you. If you love me. You would rejoice because I said, I'm going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before, before it comes, that when it comes to pass, you may believe. I will no longer walk or talk much with you. For the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so do I. Arise, let us go from here. Just saying. John 14 is trying to speak to us in a way about, you know, peace that is here and peace that is in heaven and peace that is coming that is not as the world understands it. Why? And right, this is part of this theory, right? The world can't because it's blind. It's blind because of its own self-deceit and self-destruction. It's blind because of the spirit. So let's going to quickly like jump through all this stuff. Yeah, amen. Amen, me, even though it's probably M-E. So all those people watching, this is what we do. 
Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for the people that are on here. Father, we, we rebuke and cast down every foul voice that would cause distraction and division. Father, we rebuke and cast down every mind that seeks to establish itself against what you're trying to get across tonight. Holy Spirit, we drive out every foul spirit of discord and division and confusion and chaos and lies, Father. Those that are stuck on their own truth, Lord, if they continue, we'll boot them. But Father, I ask that you sp spiritually speak to them where they are. I'm, I'm speaking peace to their mind, their fingertips. If they continue to type, we can just boot them. But Father, you still have a work to do inside of them. So Lord, I, I declare faith and salvation for all those people watching that the spirit of truth will prevail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to keep going. And, and this, is, this is the point of why we're doing this. If you don't understand what God is doing, you're not going to get it. So we're talking about peace. You know, God's peace is violent. And we're trying to understand these things at a very high level. And so if we're doing this, this is what we address as often as possible. Uh, gosh, how can stock did I follow? Amen, Brian. All right, spiritual blindness, Second Corinthians. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine the world looks at God like, why, if God's real, why isn't he making things peaceful? Because the gospel is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. They can't receive this. Zephaniah 1.17, I will bring distress on mankind so that they shall walk like the blind. This is God saying this. And you're like, no, Jesus is love. God is saying, I will bring distress on mankind so they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like, like dung. That's a dark word. I'm just saying. John 12, 40, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart, and they turn, and I would heal them. This is, of course, how Satan keeps people in bondage. Romans eleven twenty five. lest you be wise in your own sight, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come, and the fullness of the Gentiles is almost, almost done. Ephesians 5, 8, for at one time you were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. All right, Terry's still going at it. All right, I'm going to keep going on. Romans 2, but for those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey righteousness, they will be, there will be wrath and fury. So imagine this. Imagine the world wants to do its own thing without God. Imagine the world wants to seek its own pleasure, its own peace, its own comfort, its own definition of all these things. Imagine the world and leaders of the world want to rewrite, you know, all this gender, you know, truth as lies. And they want to tell us that, you know, the biblical truth on genders is, is lies and it's totally wrong. So imagine this, but for those who are self-seeking, self-deception, self-understanding, the ones who follow self, follow their own, um, follow their own evil dictates of the heart. See how far... Yeah, this Terry person might get bumped in a second. Um, if we can look at this from one crazy high level, those who are self-seeking do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. So again, all those people out there who will continually doubt God and shut down God, it's because they are self-seeking. They want an outcome. They want the outcome of peace without God. You want it bad, you get it bad. John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. And this goes all the way back to, all the way back to Deuteronomy. But to this day, the Lord has not given you a heart to understand or eyes to see or ears to hear. And where else do we understand that? King Solomon. So. Um, when we when we read this stuff and we we go back in the Old Testament into the Book of Kings, we understand like where Solomon started, where he goes. This is pretty cool. It's pretty powerful. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon 
in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness and righteousness and in brightness of heart toward you, even though he messed up massively, which means God redeems, God stores, restores. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on this throne this day. And now, O Lord, think, keep in mind, Solomon is 15 when he's saying this. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of, my, of David, my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. It's humility. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Verse 9. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil. It also kind of translates, give, give, Solomon asks for a heart that hears God. For who is able to govern this, your great people? Now, as we continue, it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or life of, or the life of your enemies. So think about how many people are out there are asking for God to take out our enemies and not that they be saved, right? We pray for our enemies. But have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. God says, behold, I now do according to your word. Think about that. All those people who want to just pray silently and, and don't think that the power of left is in the tongue. God is saying, now I do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind so that no one like you has, has been before you and none like you shall rise after you. For all those people asking for discernment, just pray for a discerning mind. The gift of discernment is the gift of the discerning of spirits. It's more complicated than that. So that none like you has been before you and none like you shall rise after you. Verse 13, I give you also what you have not asked both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, right? This is the warning. I want you, yes, all you people, when you pray as often as you can, pray out loud. Do not just pray silently. Get in the habit of praying out loud by yourselves, with people, with family, with friends, all the time. Pray without ceasing. But, but I, want, I want you to, to, to drive at this understanding. God also gives what we don't ask in accordance with what God was asking Solomon. And so if God was asking Solomon about kingly things, it's so cool that God just responds, Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind so that none like you has been before you and none like you shall rise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honors, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. I want to drive at something just real, real high level so you guys can understand this. If you believe in once saved, always saved, this is an Old Testament way of invalidating that. Why did God give Solomon a condition? God gave David a promise that he would have an heir sit on the throne all the days, right, forever, and yet give Solomon a condition. Why would you think that at any point you can just kind of slip your faith into a lower gear and go forward? Amen, Brian Hughes, by the way. Praise God. We pray for moments like that. I feel it even through my family members are in the whirlwind because I'm doing this and I'm divorcing my wife because I feel, well, okay. You know, it's the thing, you got to be careful on stuff like that because God doesn't always want husbands and wives to be div be divorced. I'm not trying to throw confusion your way, man. I'm just saying. It's a weird it's a weird comment to make. Glad you're following God, though. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep driving. So if you think about this, what if, what if God's peace is violent? The peace that we think God provides and once saved, always saved, it's very peaceful because it requires nothing of us. What if his violence... What if his violence is even a form of like, listen, don't believe in the sun, right? Kiss the sun unless you be angry. If you believe in Christ, you're saved, but you can still lose it. People right, were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, and we can fall out of relationship with one another. And sometimes it's irreparable. God's love, thankfully, is not human love. 
But why would we want to chance it? Correct, Denise. You can't live any way that you want to. And so let me go farther. And we, we finish this off. He says, and if you will walk my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. After a reign of 40 years, he died of natural causes around 55 years of age. And I want to tell you where, you know, the fear of God, right? He did not fear his peace of old. This is where this actually goes sideways. Yep. Amen, Bonnie. Yeah, with Jehu and Jezebel. Yeah, Jehu did not come to bring peace. He brought the dogs. First Kings 11. Now, King Solomon loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh and goes to name a few other people. From the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the sons of Israel, you shall not associate with them, neither shall they associate with you, for they will surely turn your heart away after other gods. This is how wild this gets. Solomon held fast to these in love, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned his heart away. For it came about when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away after other gods. And his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father had been. So when we read these parts and we say, okay, so wait, God, is it not because you withhold your peace of old that we don't fear you? Even this, our people, our relationships, our covenants, those that we allow into our circle will change us and will surely turn our heart away after other gods. It doesn't say that it'll tar- turn our hearts away from God. All we have to do is be redirected towards other gods, which in most cases itself, people get turned to self and then it just it goes sideways from there. And so the, the further we go, oh, thanks. Thanks, Moilene. I appreciate that. I think that's what that is. Listen, if 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 something's hitting true, it's because it's it's God. It's it has nothing to do with me. And so I I want everyone to soak this in. How many people have we let into our life that shouldn't be there? How many things have we let into our life that are taking our attention, our love away from God to where we're loving other gods? And what what does that bring about, right? It's really self-deception and self-destruction. Let's knock out some verses, then we're going to get to the punchline. Proverbs 16, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 18, before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty and before honor is humility. 2 Timothy 4, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, Shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Romans 1. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased, reprobate mind to do those things which are not godly. Acts 14. And saying, Sirs, why do you do these things? We are also men of like passions with you. And preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities. So the Bible is equating passions, things that we passionately pursue with vanities, turn from them to the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all the things that are in it. Hebrews 10, but we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them who believe into the saving of the soul. Now, why are we going through all this? Where are we going through all this? Is because what God does, God replaces the old with the new. When he saves us in their sanctification, God replaces the old with the new. Not only did he do it in the beginning, not only did he do it with Christ, he's doing it again as, we, as, as this age draws to a close in Revelation 21. We're going to read it, but again, think about why would God allow destruction and violence to occur? Because there's a creation process that's happening. And so again, God's peace of old is where, how did God attain peace of old? He sent a flood. He destroyed everything. And so the best of our ability, it's spiritual blindness, it's it's self-deception, it's seeking destruction that we don't even realize we're seeking destruction. It's fearing God. And why would we choose to do this? Why would we choose to to go through this? It's hard to say lost. I mean, comments, these things she's been through in the past. She has a dark side. I'm walking light. Can I save her? Brian Hughes, you can't save anyone. Um Jesus can, though. The Holy Spirit can. 
and oftentimes the Bible's pretty clear. You're supposed to stay with people, you know, go a distance. There, there are grounds for divorcing, but you're supposed to stay with them and go the distance um, in order for God's work to be shown. I'm just saying. I, I don't know your story, man. You can email in. We can we can talk about it. But, um, you know, maybe there's something there. Maybe there's not. God often wants us to go through these things. Uh, that's, that's why my choice is divorce. Is that wrong? I don't know if it's wrong, man. Listen, listen. no one can tell you but God. There's some biblical things as, as to how he outlines this stuff, but just saying there's a lot to go there. Uh, Devontae, thoughts on Isaiah 10, 16. We'll get to that hopefully tonight. If not, another time. Just remind me. All right, I'm going to read Revelation 21, and this is this whole point, right? God's peace. God's peace happens in ways that we do not understand or appreciate. Like how many people do you know say, oh my gosh, God, just just send Jesus so he can fix it. And they don't realize that by doing so, they have a 25% chance of living. They have a 75% chance of dying because three quarters of the world's population is destroyed. And you say, but he doesn't appoint us to wrath. Be a lot cooler if he could trust us to go through whatever he sends us through, and we're going to still rely on him. I'm just saying. Revelation 21. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. God's peace is violent. God's peace is violent. God allowed the old earth and the old heaven to pass away. God's peace is violent. And you're saying, why would he do this? What's wrong with this earth? It's not his. He created it. It was corrupted. It's not his. Also, there was no more. There was no more sea, no more ocean. But then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. So in the full measure of this, God's peace brings, it almost requires a death. God's peace in the flood, his peace of old required that, that you know, the the demons, the Nephilim, the Rephaim, that they all died. God's peace required the death of Christ. God's peace, peace this time is going to require the death of this earth. God's peace is violent. This is such a good reason to be in reverential fear, in righteous fear of a God that can do this with the click of his fingers. And his mercy is better than judgment. We should be praying for it, but we're exhausting it. And to the best of our ability, we have to keep pushing in. Then he who sat on the throne, verse 5, said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderous, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, astrologers are all in that bucket of sorcery and, and idolaters. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns for fire and brimstone, which is the second death. If you think that you just want peace, the invitation is for all of us to realize that God's peace hits hits hard. God's vengeance hits hard. God drives at things in a way that that we uh, we can't really get at. Block Billy Music on YouTube live stream. Who's Billy Music? Are you still here? Jade, sending me messages. Can't see it. Jade, if they're still here, let me know. Unblock them. I might have already done that. Um, this is This is going to be so cool. Cool part is what's going on right now is that Jesus is giving us reasons to desire peace. He's giving reasons, and we pray for the peace of Israel, pray for, pray for the peace of the whole Middle East. We pray for the peace. And when we do that, and that's why you know people are like, 
people are trying to say, you got blessed Israel, so you're blessed. I, I pray for a lot of things to happen. I Again, I, I got to pray according to the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit leads me. And, and when I pray for the Middle East, and I, I pray that, you know, that Israel is at peace, the Israel of God specifically, also the geography. And that peace might come through violent means. I'm okay with that. Why? I pray for peace in America, and that peace might come through violent means. Because guess what? I don't think that we can have peace with the current people that are running things in Washington. Don't think we can have it. Don't think we can have peace with the current administration running things at Disney, uh, you know, in media, in in Hollywood entertainment. I don't think it's possible. Which means, which means the peace I pray of God. It's quite violent, and it should be destroying things and tearing things down. God is at peace with his creation now. However, the next dispensation, Christ returns in Revelation. Uh, if, if you want to, you know, if you want to think about these things, that's fine. I, I, we're trying to have childlike faith. We're trying to walk this out in a way it's like, you know, thing. God's doing God things, and we're doing us things. And to the best of our ability, we got we to gotta navigate this. Anyways, this was just this whole part where, if you are out there and you're seeking peace and you're seeking, you know, God's will and you're, you're, you've somehow possibly put God into a box and his peace into a box of your understanding, this is our opportunity to actually look at it very differently and say, God, you do, you do things above our pay grade. We love that. We need that. And we're here for it. And so if whatever else you want to do, by all means, do it. All right. We've already been at it for, God, what, like an hour and 15 minutes. That's not bad. That's not bad. We're going to go through some videos. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. There's some fun ones in this whole mix. And then some not. Um, you know, we're about spiritual warfare. We're about a bunch of things. We cover a lot of ground. There's some funny ones. Um, I want to talk about trauma for a second. Do we start with levity? What should we start with? No, we won't start with that. All right. Understand what spiritual violence looks like from the other side. Just an idea. You're Hamas. You're Hamas. Wow. That's a good one. You're what? You're Hamas? Yes, we're all Hamas. Hey, I'm Hamas. We're all Hamas. They're just celebrating that. Like the world out there is just, it's its weird. And it's its only, only getting weirder. And this is why. This is crazy. Because when... Um, you're grieving. This lady is saying she's a witch. She sees dead people. And what she's about to talk about is her story of grief and loss. And she's having a difficult time with it. So the world is trying to tell you that witchcraft and all these new age things, right, that they're accessible and that they're relevant and they are real. Listen, the demonic realm is, is real. All this stuff is spiritually pouring out. But this girl's lost. She is lost. She's hurting. And I don't know who is in her life to see these things. Days are real. She sees familiar spirits. She can see, yeah. It, it, listen, our spirits see all sorts of stuff that are connecting to all sorts of other things. And so to the best of our ability, when we see these things, anytime that you see live streams like this, the next one I'm going to put up, please pray against things to pray against. Pray for things. Pray for the salvation, for their faith. Pray against the demonic influence in their lives. Every single time you put put this through, so I'm just using these as an example, but this is it's equal parts like wild and then heartbreaking. I guess it just takes time to go look at things. I don't know. And she's playing Lauren Daigle worship music in the background, if you can even call it that anymore. Think about that. She she's blasting herself out there. She had hundreds of people watching, just her just somehow go through this lamenting process, listening to Lauren Daigle and saying, I see dead people. I'm a witch. Ask anything. Uh, just. And people are freaking mesmerized by this. I got asked to the other day. Let's time. It's time to take it out. My brother-in-law was. Let's take it out. Let's clean it up. Let's let's start. Spiritual blindness. Anyone? Start it up. Let's, you know. He told me that his uncle, he read the Bible you guys my uncle lanny she's also about to say that her uncle her dead uncle knew that she was a witch and just said please keep doing you 
Uh, just seek the Lord with open heart truth. Amen. If you only change the eyes of our understanding, be enlightened. Amen, G. Wiz. Let me know. Yeah, all of us. Father, name Jesus, Ephesians 1.18. We, we pray and ask that the, uh, the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that we may know what the hope is calling, the riches of the glory, the inheritance of the saints. Amen. How do you explain when you're a baby, you see things that you don't when you grow up as much as you can? Because when you're young, you're just closer to the spiritual realm. Like you're, you don't have anything in your mind that's had to navigate that that trauma and get through. Evil is very real. Yep. People are looking for love and attention all the wrong places. Amen. And people are giving it. That's the other part. People are, are mesmerized and entertained. And they're like a bunch of NPCs out there. Hopeless posture. Yep. Lord, break down the lies and the enemy in our life. Amen. Yeah, sad is that even so-called Christians follow it. Yeah, which is just crazy. And again, I stroll through this stuff and I'm like, this is wild. This is so prevalent all over TikTok and social media. But what she's listening to is Lauren Daigle saying that her her uncle who read the Bible like several times told her that she should just keep being her. Now she's saying that there are tree spirits and that you can see it in the light. Uh, too many fake medium accounts, apparently, she's commenting on. Keep in mind, taken within seconds apart, blah, blah. Oh, that's the other part. She's basically a thirst trap. You mad I don't post medium stuff? Well, I'm mad because I can't because there are so many fake accounts. And so it's basically just, this is what she's doing. Sometimes I wonder what went wrong. Then I realize maybe everything happened just right, actually. But there's one thing at the end of this. It's just be here, not me. It was the last one. No one wants to talk about the dead, beat, grandparents, jealousy, game playing, no accountability and anything. Like, she's just bringing up, like, things that are vexing her. Religion is where God is above and spiritualism is where God is within. Like, she's coming up with her own definitions of this stuff. Like, all, all these people. Oh, wait, there's more. Where's the other one? The other one's actually... Do, 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 do. Yeah, we pray for her. We pray for all these people. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that these people get saved. Monitoring spirits are hard at work in our lives too. Yep. Amen. If there's good, there's bad. Totally. Uh, that shows how easily people will follow the Antichrist when he reveals himself. Yeah, people want to see demonic things, but wait, there's more. She's not the only one. If I can find this video. I'm at the Tucker, Tucker Carlson videos. We got a fun one from Tucker. Hold on one second. Where's... That's not it. Oh, this live stream. This guy uh, sat down for a long time. All right, I'm going to mute it and just show myself right there. Okay, so this guy goes on and on and on. And some woman calls in. Some woman calls in to say, you know, I read the Bible and I'm a Christian. And I just, what the Bible says, no man can know. You know, I'm just wondering that why you're saying that, you know, you're trying to know things that the Bible says no man can know. It's because he's working for the other team and he doesn't care what our book says. So if you're a Christian and you feel like you want to call into this guy's TV show and tell him things that he already knows, what are you doing? I mean, maybe if the Holy Spirit leads you, but this woman's, the way that she was discussing it was like wild. That you would have me on here. I'll be real. <laughs> um, but only because I typically, like I've, Asked or asked to be a guest on a lot of lives before, and it just doesn't work out. So, if you're a Christian out there, please don't ask to be on the Satan worshippers' lives unless you have something really good to say. Because this dude just sat there and was bored. Yeah, it's you, exactly. Let's pray for those Christians who follow Taylor Swift and then call them Swifties and don't see anything truly going on. Yeah, Amen. That's all crazy. So I find it exciting waiting to see what God is going to do next. Amen. Uh, we're going to keep, uh, where's the next one? Anyways, yeah, that, that sat satanic stuff is just everywhere. Uh, this one, this it? Yeah. <laughs> Make her disappear just like poof, then she's... <laughs> what I wish I knew when I started quantum jumping. Sweet baby infant Jesus. <laughs> One of my friends doesn't talk to me anymore because I told her Taylor Swift is a witch. She said, I'm, a, I'm Delulu. Well, yeah. Well, we have a video about that tonight. I'm just saying. Um, did he see a demon? <laughs> yeah, this stuff is wild. Anyways, this is like another influencer that's here. And she's uh, mindfulness, psychic, all these things. Just keep watching. Done.
I'll just take off the music. Uh, Wait a second. That X is an X for a reason. You can all feel equally compassionate toward their pain, empowered in choosing yourself. Don't let chaos planets play tricks on you. So chaos planets. So you allow shady people into your life or relationships go sideways for a multitude of reasons. And all of a sudden now we have chaos planets. It's, it's kind of wackadoodle. We go forward. One second. What color is my aura? This is what's captivating people online everywhere. What color is my aura? I don't know. I'm, I'm not playing reindeer games. Meditation is building the connection between you and your divine. Is that word? Your divine world. Meditation. Meditation does that. It's a demonic divine world. Just thinking about the fact that trauma can intensify and dysregulate your clairvoyance. Trauma. There's another video with Dr. Drew afterwards. This, I mean, this stuff gets wild. I remember my psychology professor teaching us not to disregard the mystical and psychic experience of patients. We learned how to spot the difference between someone with extrasensory abilities and psychosi. I And she can clearly articulate the two. He was this one person that I have heard acknowledge that. And by the way, it's not just women. The dudes out there, there's a dude video that's hilarious. There's more though. We have to keep going. I know there's a lot. When your higher self vibing, when you finally show up to meditate because they're about to give you the next steps in your vision quest. It wasn't just a movie with Matthew Modine. I don't know who needs to hear this, but a client's higher self once told me that the best protection for your energy is in daily maintenance, practices, beliefs, and lifestyle. And this is supposed to be mystical advice for some reason. Keep going. When your nervous system goes into dorsal vagal shutdown and effective communication isn't an option. It sounds very smart, but it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's all self. I'm, I'm reading this to laugh, but like, like pray for this because it, listen, here's, here's the part. This person that's out there is clearly, clearly, and not just delusive, like deceived. These people are 100% deceived. And you see this, oh yeah. This whole thing, which which I stopped. I'm also going to get at another point, which which needs to drive at this. So we think it's wackadoodle, right? We think it's like th these people are just out there deceiving themselves. They're deceiving countless people by this because just trash is in the air, a constant basis. But I also want to impress upon you the whole impact of fatherlessness and father wounds and father trauma all the way around. And that's why we have to pray for these people. That's the whole point to pray for these people. I read this. My dad reached out after years of no contact. I didn't hold strong boundaries and then engaged in negative self-talk afterwards. This is what it looks like to be a human on their healing journey. Sometimes we slip up and engage in old habits that dysregulate us. Give yourself grace. You're living all this for the first time. Yeah, total spirit of rejection. 100%. 100%. Like it's a, it's a real thing. And then she goes on and this is where I, I jump ship. I'm like the story about the time plant medicine turned her into a lesbian. Uh, this is the trauma. People want to identify as the trauma because they can get something off of it. She charges money for all this stuff. Devil has his demons watch people in their homes to get back to those readers telling them all about you. That's how the readers, yeah, 100%. So like, why would we allow these things into our homes? When if you have kids and people out there that are that are focusing on this stuff, guess what? Your kids are watching this stuff too. Your kids are out there watching this stuff too. But wait, there's more. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is like one of the best. It's between Jupiter and you. It's tell you about something magical that's going to happen on April 21, twenty twenty four. He wants to tell us about something magical that's going to happen, okay? Do you believe in manifestation? This has not occurred since May 8th, 1941. They just start making up all these points, all these points. So in, in the last video, right, there's some sort of, you know, girl with a father wound with some sort of trauma, and she, you know, is out there, you know, living her best life and just deceiving people. Then there's this guy. 
who's like the typical new age guy that's doing this just to pretty much sleep with women and go on. And he's telling you there's something magical hasn't occurred since May 8th, 1941. It's going to happen on April 21, most powerful, May the 8th, most powerful of the Jupiter conjunct in Uranus and Taurus. I mean, I want to laugh at that alone. <laughs> the guy's going blind. It is double rainbow time. Uh, I have many dates <laughs> had in the last year. So we're going to keep watching. It just it, it gets more. Change. Let's just it's start again. Start afresh. Just to say that I've had uh, a number of uh, inquiries for consultations. So just to clarify, uh, I do do readings and consultations. And so you understand. This guy is about to explain his method for charging people money. And the re and I, I'll, I'll be completely honest. This is almost a call to tithe and give offering. Because if you know that the enemy and has minions funding the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of noise and trash and confusion. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks, no thanks. 100%. Yeah, it's all tarot, all these things. Like, Listen, if you know that this is out there, it's a good reason to tithe because this trash is, is getting money. And what it is, it's kind of like, I use the term free base uh, consultation as in, I fuse a lot of things. It's a fusion of Western and Chinese astrology. So there are 1,440 characters in my system, over two. He's got a system. The guy's got a system, naturally. Two million one-to-one -one dynamics. So it's a lot of one-to-one -one dynamics. It's pretty complex. It's very Added complex. into this. It's very complex. We can't understand it. So he's going to tell us how it is. This fusion is numerology and timelines and luck cycles. Lux cycles. There's a cycle of luck. I, like it's funny, but it's not funny. And it's all tarot card stuff. Yeah, tarot cards are everywhere. My spirit is not like, no, none of it. It's, it's. Again, this is a measure of witchcraft. And are you out there praying against it? Yeah, it's like free. But he gives free base readings. What does that even mean? Any line. Gemini is the best friend. <laughs> Gemini girl is the best friend. <laughs> he dresses. He's almost like a real life, most interesting man in the world. I just, again, I'm going to give you like, there's all sides of this. There's men, there's women. And there's more. Well, they are the contrary kids. Decided that they're grounded, addressing one and treating everyone not particularly well. And at the end of the day, going, ah, right now, manifestation, dear manifestation, may I have, I don't know, a new car? Uh, Taurus and Libra, two for the price of one. <laughs> two for the price of one. All it is, they're trying to get your money, the dudes are trying to get in your pants, girls are trying to sell you an OnlyFans subscription. And it's, it's all there. And then, you know, why the daddy issues? Why does that matter? The trauma? Is it not obvious to you? I grew up in a brothel. In a brothel with an abusive, both abusive parents being hitting oh you God. and striking you. Do, do you know what happens to your brain with kids, brains when they were hit? Did they ever hit you with an object? Yes, my mom threw a chair on my... Listen, there's this verse, right? Spare, spare the rod, spoil the child. Like... Spankings are amazing. Like if you grow up with spankings, you're probably better off for it. But again, science and the world, they just want to tell you, oh, there's there's a condition. If you were ever hit as a child but with an object, there's a condition and you're worse for it. Hmm. And the dictionary too. Hmm. And, and so what happens when kids are subjected to that, it, it shatters their regulatory system. Okay. What he's about to go into is this associative identity disorder, which happens to a lot of kids that experience especially sexual trauma. It's freaking dark. It is bad. Same thing happens, by the way, in military trauma. Same thing happens in other groups. Uh, Dana Mo, I'm sorry I'm laughing, but I've been accused of being a witch and a medium. Uh, I've been a Taurus. <laughs> I've been a Taurus like the car. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play part of the rest of the video, but but listen. If we keep treating people like they're weak and afraid and incapable, they're going to act weak and afraid and incapable. 
if we're going to treat people like their trauma matters more than the redemptive power and the restoration power of Christ, then they and their trauma will always be unreachable by the redemptive power of Christ. If we treat people like like all their maladies are greater than the strength that Christ has to alleviate them, that's exactly what's going to happen. And the world is not running out of every method under the sun that's not Christ-like. So what do we do with it? We try and lead people as best we can. It's similar to saying I grew up getting getting beat and nothing shattered me. It made me stronger. I closed the doors. Amen. I guess that's what explains my condition. Phil, I don't think anything explains your condition, bro. I'm just saying. I just like this stuff. It's it's painful to see as much as you know. Doctor Drew is out there saying what he says, and it's just, it's just wild. And so they dissociate. Like when this was ever happening to you, do you ever feel like you were like in a dream or watching from above? Yes, or, I feel good. You feel good because you were disconnected from mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that is a survival strategy that becomes a way of managing unpleasant emotions. That's So surviving and enduring because you have to manage unpleasant emotions is pathological. Like all they want to do, all they want to do, yeah, it's it's new age, Dr. Drew's new age. Listen, all they want to do is tell you some other explanation as to why Christ can't heal. Sheepdog for you, we can't enable someone to stay where they are. Christ does heal PTSD. I'm an example. Amen. 100%. 100% respectfully, the world needs to be trauma-informed. This knowledge can help us navigate the nervous system and be all the wiser. However, we need to be overcomers more than anything. Evolving Shiloh on Instagram. Maybe, maybe, because what if we become so trauma-informed, if that's what we think, that all of a sudden we create all these barriers to what Christ can do? And that happens. Unfortunately, people start using medical terminology and they make excuses and then they medicate. And so Jesus heals. Jesus heals people without them having a medical diagnosis or some sort of mental diagnosis. It's true. It just happens. So so how amazing is this? That healing doesn't require trauma information. It requires surrendering your condition. And the cause of it to Christ. Healing, repenting, asking for forgiveness, letting go of bitterness, letting go of resentment. I don't need to have some doctor or some person inform me of what I went through. I went through it. I don't need them to label what I went through. I was there. Me helping to give it a name might actually mean that I subscribe to a bad report. And if I subscribe to a bad report, that's on me. That's not on God. Yeah, it's his comment. Someone depressed is stuck in their feelings, thoughts, and emotions of the past. That's why the Bible tells us to look ahead. Amen. Yeah, don't look back. You're not going that way. Uh, I'm going to keep playing this. So, but like, think about it. Like all this stuff, actually, I'm going to remove it. All these, all these people are like, oh, but you should, you should absolutely just, you know, just wallow here. Because if you wallow here, you know, it's going to be great. You're going to be better off for it. No, you're not. You're actually not, hundred percent not, and I don't know. That's a whole separate thing. Meanwhile, you know what we need? Mm, this is actually pretty cool. So Taylor Swift has a new album out, and the encompassing themes include, but are not limited to, suicide, murder, rage, blasphemy, depression, unforgiveness, and rebellion. So it was really hard to listen to this album, not only because every song sounds the same, but because every song's message is incredibly dark. What we let in, the eyes and the ears are windows to our soul. And so if we allow trash in, garbage in, garbage out. And first, the fact that this lady even spent time to listen to Taylor T. Swift's album, I mean, that's farther than I'll go because that's, that's not what I do. But I'm just saying, like, if you don't take this stuff seriously, that's on you. If there are parents out there 
who don't take the messaging and the music seriously and then wonder why teenage suicide takes their child, that is on you. It's on them. If parents don't take the enemy seriously operating in broad daylight, that's on you. If you then try and pray for God to change the circumstance or condition of your child or your family or your friend's kid's condition, and yet you don't address the underlying evil, how many families out there are setting up their kids to be casualties of this spiritual war? A lot of them. We're surrounded by it. So what's going to happen? As kids, as as spirit of suicide increases, as all these things go down, how many parents can be like, oh, we love God. No, they're going to have an expectation that God should have done something to step in. And God's looking at them like, actually, I tried to warn you and tell you, don't allow this trash into your house and your noise, and your, into your house and your homes, your hearts, all of it. And so people are going to do what they do. And so we're surrounded by people who are walking. Their reasons for living are excuses not to die. They're literally walking, waiting their turn. And at a certain point, let the dead bury the dead. Amen, Marlena. Uh, no weapon for you against us or prosper. Amen. Taylor Swift is a legit weapon. I'm just saying. She admits that this album is coming from a place of torture, and it really shows. You know, what's really sad is that her entire fan base champions her torture. She's a 30-something-year-old woman who is as emotionally... Think about that. Her fan base keeps buying albums of her, you know, with all the things that she's going through, probably that she puts herself through or that her handlers put her through. So as we see this, orthopedic trauma would help to have an orthopedic trauma surgeon, but put our post back together. Yeah, amen. All right. Yeah, parental blocks are a thing. But wait, there's more. <coughs> there's a lot more, actually. Well, I know how bad things are getting. Um, uh... In UK, you can give away the Koran and spread Islam, but you cannot preach the gospel. British police are advising Christian preachers to leave or they will be arrested because they could cause harassment, alarm, and distress, which is a criminal defense. Coming soon to an America near you unless we self-destruct first. So you can't you can't even make this stuff up. Like you can't. This was hilarious. Uh, I'm going to save that. This is interesting. Oops. Remove. Remove. That thing is not going away, is it? Here we go. Christ and angels are coming. So Charles Manson was obsessed with the fact that uh, haste, he was trying to hastily enter in confusion and disorder, violent disorder. It's lawlessness. Like you have to understand, when the Satan worshipers are operating from the same book, we have to understand that they know things and they're putting this faith in things that we disregard. And my gut response is we probably shouldn't do that. How about the dad who got arrested in his home for helping others in his church to have, have a place to sleep? Yep. Uh, it is going to get that bad here in the U.S. if we don't stop being silent. Amen. So, listen, I, this is an attempt to remind you that the enemy of our souls, people that do very real destruction, are very real people. It is spiritual people, spiritual beings operating through human people. If you keep disregarding any human element of the enemy activity, you are doing the entire body of Christ and all of Christendom a disservice. You're supposed to understand that the enemy is operating in broad daylight through people. And we just keep disregarding it. And at what point do we do we finally take what they're saying seriously? This this is just where it gets just wild. Ezekiel writes about it right. in the first chapter, Wheels in the Sky. Mm -hmm. So these are spiritual phenomena. There's no evidence they're from another planet. I mean, I think that's the op, that's the lie, that they're from Mars. Look, space, the atmosphere is really well monitored, right? Both for military, for defense reasons, but also because, like, it'd be nice to know when asteroids are coming. And there's no evidence, has never been any evidence, that there are lots of these objects, these vehicles coming into our atmosphere from somewhere else. Even Tucker Carlson, Tucker for VP. I don't mind that. So just think about it. Um, Tucker's trying to remind, this stuff is real. All these things in the Bible are real, 
including people. And so we have things to pray against. We have things to pray for and to the best of our ability. If we can navigate this, we should be, we should be trying, oops, we should be trying to, you know, like expand the measure of our prayer to encompass these things, which are widespread. Let's keep going, but wait, there's more. Now, I'm going to give you another example. Hmm. I can remember my mom and, you know, and probably some of you out there or your parents will say, oh, well, I don't listen to all those crazy people like Jimi Hendrix. This is wild. Think about the lyrics. Think about the lyrics that these people are going to, uh, to, to bring up on any given basis when you listen to music and you think, oh, it's fine. It's just new music is going sideways. The old music is fine. Mm, let's second guess that. And, you know, the Doors and, and, or ACDC or, you know, whoever. <laughs> Not Alice Jimmy. Cooper. I, you know, Not Alice Maiden. Cooper. He's Christian now. Kind of, you know, Iron Maiden. Music. What about Barry Manilow? Oh, he was a he was a good guy. Barry Manilow. That was pop. That was not rock. Pop Barry music. Manilow. And I'm not going to get into his uh dirty his birdie Barry orientation Manilow. on life right now, mm. but he came out as gay, by the way. All those years getting couples to sing about like pop stuff, poppy stuff. Sing about gay. But, but listen listen to where this goes. Um he did come out of the closet a few years ago. But let me show you the lyrics to one of his songs. It's a song that every one of us have probably heard. Like so many times people are like, oh, I don't really like this song. I just like the beat. You should probably pay attention to the crap that you're actually allowing inside your ears. This is wild. The song is called, um, I Sing the Songs That Make the Whole World Sing. I Sing the Songs That Make the Whole World Sing. It should be harmless, right? Very freaking man low. Hear this. And let the lyrics come up there so you can see them. I've been alive forever, and I wrote the very first song. I put the words and the melodies together. I am music, and I write the songs. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I write the songs of love and special things. I write the songs that make the young girls cry. I write the songs. I write the songs. My home lies deep within you, and I've got my own place in your soul. Now, when I look out through your eyes, I am young again, even though I'm very old. Straight up Satan. Like everything. Straight up Satan. Oh, thanks, Barbs. Yeah, all this stuff is straight up Satan. And again, just be mindful. Test everything against the Holy Spirit. Barry freaking Manilow, Satan singing right through it. He's like a meat puppet. It's just a human meat puppet. And you're like, no, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Barry Manilow is coming to usher in demonic influence into your life. And you're saying like, I, I don't even listen to Barry Manilow. A lot of people do. And it's, it's sideways. I'm just saying. It's a thing. And you're like, wait a second, I don't even know if the Bible is true. What about this? Evidence that the Bible was right. Check this out. We have proof that the Red Sea crossing happened. Like proof, not just artifacts on the bottom. We had those. We had chariot wheels in the bottom of the Red Sea. We had all these cool little artifacts. But the coolest thing that I saw is the shoreline. If you've ever watched the Ten Commandments movie, they had that big pillar of fire that came down. That's mentioned in the Bible, this pillar of fire. I just pictured these flames coming down. But when you go to that shoreline where, where it's documented to happen, the entire shoreline is melted sand. And it takes about 3,000 degrees or more to melt that sand. And it's evenly melted. You can almost see like footprints. There are stones infused in this melted sand. The Bible is real. It's just one more example. The Bible is 100% real. 100%. And everyone saw that video of Tupac recently that came out where Tupac basically sideways. All right. So, again, what I'm trying to get at, right, God's peace is violent. We gave the scripture, went all the way through, now we're going to videos. What else is there? What else do we want to see? In the business of propaganda. We... It's a Muslim dude speaking at Columbia College. He's saying, we're in the business of propaganda. But listen to what he says and where he takes it. I'd like to admit it or not. And so the question is, do people want a revolution, an actual revolution, a real revolution? Do they want to be revolutionary? Or do they want to sell ciphers, opinions on the internet? Because revolutions require on the ground organizing work. America is a settler colonial society. Israel is a settler colonial society. Where do you think that they got their, that idea from, that structure from? BDS is great. 
Blocking ports is amazing. Blocking ports is amazing? And this dude's speaking at Columbia. Okay. Shipping routes, commerce, travel, trade, even ruining somebody, a white supremacist, powerful day, week, month. Even ruining another dude's day. Well, how do we go beyond that? How do we go beyond that? It's a question. How do we go beyond that? How do we go beyond that? We need to really redream, learn how to redream dangerous care. They, he said, we need to redream, really need to redream how to, how to live dangerously or how to dream dangerously again. Like they need to reapproach how to dream dangerously again and go through this. We can't wait for the day after or what Palestine is going to look like. Because the way that Palestine looks like depends also on how this place is going to look like. The way Palestine looks like depends on the way that this place looks like. I'm just saying, the more that we see this, it is people. You think he's speaking gibberish? He's trying to evoke something. When I ask a whole room of people, like, we need to think and dream bigger as far as the violence that we're perpetrating right now. We need to think more. I don't know who the guy is. Need to find out, but still. I don't want us downplaying what the enemy is doing and operating in broad daylight. I just don't. And the more that we do, that's on us. And God's looking at us like, be a lot cooler if you actually took this seriously. Maybe. Just, there's just, there's so much here. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, yeah. This is what's returning as well. The Yellow Emperor, Wang Di, one of the angels that the Book of Enoch talks about that came down and taught men's... By the way, I don't know why he has to be shirtless in the video, but that's just his choice of clothing for this video. Was this Can't emperor a human form of an angelic dragon being? The legend of the Yellow Emperor goes that he descended from heaven and taught men things, which we're going to compare with the Book of Enoch in a second. Wang Di was the founder of the Chinese civilization. Among things taught men agriculture, the calendar, astronomy, astrology, and sorcery. All this goes to show is that even in Chinese, like old Chinese scrolls and legends, these beings came down and ruled and did these things. Like all these nations, you know, these, these, these historical groups go back and have their own backstory as to the Nephilim and the Watchers and the Fallen. Amen, Jordan. If there must be trouble, let it be in my day that my child may have peace. Amen. Let's say uh, all this stuff, this, this Bible's on deck. Everything's real. And the more that we treat it like it's not, it's on us. Uh, <laughs> it's got to be a jelly. Whoa. What? And then there's the next generation leading us fearlessly and brave, bravely in, into the future. How big is this? Is it? Let me well, paint it with the lasers here, and then I'll turn them off. Oh, there you go. gosh. Oh, no, we got the creepy eyes the on. Oh, it's so spooky. I, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. It's, it's so spooky. Okay, lasers coming Ooh. off. Ready to zoom. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, okay, this yeah, is so at least the like four, that. right? Yep. Are they stoned? Uh oh. Camera turned off. Stand by. Stand by. And we're back. I think they're stoned. I'm pretty sure they're stoned. Yeah, next video. Amen. I'm just saying, like, all this, there's so much noise and trash out there to, con you know, deceive everyone. And I, I think we're ready for levity. Are we ready for it? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's more information than levity. It's bad. It's bad people. If you crave a hamburger, be sure to watch this video. The production process might even make you lose your appetite. First, workers put purchased frozen ground meat into a grinder. They also add a certain proportion of fat to make the ground meat finer, making it taste like fresh meat chunks. Listen, I don't mind a little bit of, a, you know, extra fat mixed in with the meat. It just makes it tasty, but, but this just gets worse. You might ruin it. Then, they pour pre-prepared ingredients and the ground meat into a mixer, along with red high-tech sauce and breadcrumbs, and mix them. Red high-tech sauce? 
It's fried together evenly. The prepared meat filling is then sent to the next workshop, where it's poured into a massive container and pressed into evenly sized patties. They are then sent through a conveyor belt into a high temperature steaming box to dry the moisture. I don't want this to ruin us hamburgers, but still, that's it's just out there. Uh, must be 420 rebuke all demonic activity, everybody on this day throughout all the cannabis. Amen. Um, it's, it's been so long. Yeah. Listen, everything is pretty much on the table. What do we need now? We need levity because that's what we do. This I'm a black person and I'm scared to admit trend. It's probably one of the greatest trends that's ever happened on TikTok because we finally have black people <laughs> calling out exactly what's wrong with the black community. This gets it's better. long enough. In this video, I basically want to talk about black gangs. Black gangs have basically terrorized the entire black community since the 90s, and it has to stop. Like, imagine going to a neighborhood you've never been to. Some 40-year-old guy walks out of his mama's house and says, Hey, where are you from, cuz? Where are you from, blood? You ain't supposed to be out here. This is my block. You live with your mama. She rents. She doesn't even know. Apparently, it's like an actual thing. Anyways, I spent some time on it and it made me laugh. But we need levity, right? The heart needs levity. Look, I think you are. What you're watching is a horse you gonna fall in the water asleep? falling asleep because his head is in a giant floating. This is like the most pure thing you're going to see on the internet all day. All day. Oh, I feel good on an old man. Does that feel good on an old man? Yes, yes. That will probably be me in, in some time. Just saying. That guy. Just oh, living cool. his best life. Just snoring his life away. It's amazing. What else do we have? This is good. Everyone needs this version of their life. Bluegrass tears for fears. Because we have nothing better to do with the time. It's, it's awesome. It's just awesome. It needs to be a ringtone. That was what we have. I think we're almost done. Almost. What's this? So the devil doesn't just target one genre of music. He's in oh, every, yeah. He's in every one. Barry Manilow. And rap music, right? It's all there. Katy Perry. It's ever all there. Seen. Freddie was Mercury. headed up by frontman and flamboyant homosexual Freddie Mercury. You are about to learn some shocking truth about Queen and their place in Satan's plan that the media, movie, and music industry won't dare show you. Queen's frontman Freddie Mercury definitely understood that the devil was gifting him with riches and worldly fame. While playing live at the Rainbow in London, Mercury held out his hand showing off his diamond-studded black glove, declaring that it was a present from Satan himself. Do you like my claws? The real diamonds. It's a present from the devil himself. It's a present from the devil himself. You don't believe me. They don't believe me. <laughs> Mercury confessed. Pause real quick. Again, no one wants. No one takes it seriously. I like. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit you with this. We believe that a guy professing to be God died and rose again three days later. 2,000 years ago, and we somehow don't believe that Satan's real and that these people are are operating in broad daylight. Shame on us. Shame on us. And now this is all catching up. I don't know if that's that pastor, Jenny, to comment on it on uh, Instagram. It's, it's wild. Like, the more that we blow this off, it's a whole different story. But wait, there's more has really murdered those stories really bastardized them so cinderella and uh, so it's a story of cinderella the the original one listen to how like institutionally they took a story that actually had a pretty solid you know at least framework of a message for young girls and young kids and this is what they turned it into 
Disney has really murdered those stories, really bastardized them. So Cinderella in particular, in the book, the reason the prince likes her is because she lived a life of labor and she had responsibilities. So again, the book of Cinderella almost gets you back to like, hey, like having values and responsibilities and putting in work and having ethic is better than just, you know, being entitled. It's kind of a thing. And that gave her character. And so when she went to the ball, the other women were boring and entitled and bratty and the prince was tired of them. He liked her because of her character, which came through having responsibility. That's completely left out of the Disney movie. They just, they turned it from a story in which working and developing character will make you into something that men value and they'll pick you over bratty entitled women. They changed that to, you shouldn't have to work. A fairy godmother will make you hot and then a man will like you for no reason. <laughs> this is institutional brainwashing for little kids. And we think that all this stuff has no impact on the big picture and the long game. And it 100% does. 100%. I, I don't know how much longer we want to think that this stuff isn't real and there aren't real people doing this. What about like a, you know, rave? You don't want to see the imagery that they're blasting at raves these days? Go back to the Anyone else remember that Lucifer was the angel of light? I don't mind that music over the ones where I'm going to say they're watching all this stuff. They're glorifying that image that's up there on the screen. All this is real. And and when when God's peace comes through violence, I don't know if any of us should be confused whatsoever about how and why this is playing out. I don't. End with one last video. It's pretty good. There's no way you don't change your uh, perspective even a tiny bit after watching this video. Watch this. If people say yes, what's the difference? You know, what the Bible's just another book. No, first off, that's wrong. The Bible's not a book. The Bible's six or six books. Forty different people wrote it. Over fifteen hundred years. There's never been a book like that in history, ever. Does that make it the Word of God? No. It just means it's worth considering because there's never been a book like this gives you some reason to consider it over the others well how about history for hundreds of years archaeology has used the old testament and new to find buildings to find people to find civilizations to find kings that didn't exist or they didn't think they did and suddenly the bible said they're there and they dug it up and there it was does that make it the word of god no it means it's historically accurate real people really existed and really wrote down what they saw it's worth considering and then they said we're gonna have god show up and lots of people said that lots of religions say it don't worry, we'll prove it as a rational God would do. I will do prophecies. I will show that I'm not trapped in linear time, that I can see beyond where you are. I will give prophecies to tell you what the guy, when I show up, when God appears on earth to reveal himself, I'll show you what he's going to look like. Over 300 prophecies. And then a man showed up one day named Jesus. And he said, I'm that guy. And he fulfilled all 300 prophecies. That's impossible. People could say, well, yes, uh, they just wrote it afterwards and filled it all in. But we know that the first Greek translation of the Old Testament was done 250 years before Jesus was born. So how could they possibly know that he'd be born in Bethlehem? How could they possibly know he was going to be crucified when crucifixions didn't even exist as a capital punishment yet? How could they know that he'd be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver 250 years before there was a Jesus? Does it make it the word of God? No, but it's time to get close. I'm not gonna play the whole video. It's someone else's content, but it this is cool. Like we we we're we're dealing with something that is again, it's heavenly. We're working against people who are demonically influenced. There is a real enemy of every size and kind, and we celebrate those things. And we, Brad Stein is that his name? That's awesome. I think it's Brad Stein. He's, he's awesome. Anyways, listen. I think we're we're done. Um, we've read a lot of words tonight. We're going to weaponize the Psalms. We'll pick it up either tomorrow or Monday, but 
as whoever you are, we've got a lot of work to do. And it's an honor to serve in the kingdom. It's an honor to pursue this. It's an honor to um, to realize that God's peace is not likely what we expect it to be. And so if we can, let's just remember that as we walk these days out, as we press in, I appreciate you guys watching. It's two hours. It's a lot of content. Um, also, all that said, the Patreon is up. Just go to Patreon, the fourth watch. You'll see it. Again, I, I, I'm in this weird throw. Jay Robinson, I appreciate you, man, if you're still on. like He's one of the first ones to subscribe to it. Um, we're doing it because I think this week we'll probably start this thing where like every other day we'll be doing stuff you know, on Patreon versus all on the social media platforms. Like I, I, I have no intention of not offering stuff for free. Patreon stuff just like I, you know, without getting too far into the, uh, into the weeds on any monthly basis, it probably costs 600 bucks. So between four and 600 bucks between the web hosting, between like the, uh, all sorts of like random, like digital stuff that we use to keep the wheels on the bus. Um, there's a lot to it. Anyways, if you feel led, we actually opened up a bunch of tiers, a bunch of options. And I'm going to start uploading a bunch of content that I haven't posted anywhere else to there just so the members feel like there's more value add and there's going to be like a prayer list there that's going to cross these things. So anyways, all that to say, I'm just trying to, um, I'm trying to basically put all these things more within reach. I know there's other people who have asked for more content, more insight, more all sorts of stuff. And so, um, as you, as you see fit, um, there's not much there. So like one video, I think they would post up there, but there's more coming. And so as you see fit, if you desire to, that'd be awesome. Um, to a huge way, I should say a small way to give back, but there's no requirement for it. Again, you're still going to find content on all the platforms. Um, there's also some stuff going to post there. It's probably a little bit spicier without the filter that I otherwise would have, because I think Facebook now is officially kind of short. I'm going to pray this out. Um, pray for a couple of things. I felt like God put in my, heart and then we take it from there heavenly father we love you we thank you for today we thank you jesus that you have done everything for us and and we look forward in ways to honor you back father as this world is falling apart your people are coming together lord i i'm praying for the spirit of faith to rise up in people for those people to rise up with hearts and spirits that seek you that crave you that love you that desire to be filled and used for your purpose Say it now, rebuke you to the core, all the way back to Sheol, every foul spirit that's working against the Lord's people and his anointed father. I cut off every attack. I bring the enemy's work to nothing. And Lord, I declare right now that all democracy inspired witchcraft, both technological, scientific witchcraft of every type in the media and the news and our entertainment father and on the concerts, Lord, and the and the tarot card readers and the new age readers and the people that are that are swindling and deceiving millions in the masses, Father. Father, I declare that you will save who can be saved. You will cause us to be sent to reach out other people and to to chase them down with your love and your heart, Lord, for what you have in store for them, Father. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for us, you know, building our faith and stretching ourselves as it relates to the things that we understand of God because you're revealing yourself to us. Father, I pray for those people who are family members who are, are not saved, who are struggling. Lord, I ask that you give them the spirit of grace and supplication. Father, just to remind the people watching tonight that have loved ones that they want to see across the line of faith, you love them more than they do. Father, thank you for the work of faith in our own lives that you're drawing us deeper. You're drawing us to intercede on behalf of things, at, uh, just a local, personal, but also a, a regional, a state level, a country level, Father, to pray for things and conditions in other nations, Lord, that are affecting your heart where your anguish is. Father, we pray against the spirit of violence, pray against the spirit of murder. We corporately pray for the peace of Israel by your means, Father. Thank you for giving us your word that shows us that there is peace that you bring that the world does not bring, Lord. And so we we receive and we told of that peace. Father, I thank you for these people, their time, their effort. Speak to them. Jesus, thank you for what you did. We can never repay you in Holy Spirit. Continue to have your way in our lives. We love you. We trust you. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. It's not our will be done, Lord, but yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, that's it. That's all we got. You guys are awesome. It's been a late night. It's like midnight here. Now it's getting there. Anyways, whatever you need, uh, you know, we'll try and tackle stuff online. If you have any questions, email us. Meanwhile, are we doing the outro, the intro? Are we doing both? What are we doing? Hmm. 
a bunch of comments. What do we do? Outro? Do the outro. We're doing both. You want the new, new one? The new one was like a longer one. No, we're not doing new one. We don't have time for that. All right. You guys are awesome. It's the intro and the outro. Well, I'll finish my work. Where are we off to next? Well, I'll finish my work. Where are we off to next? So where are we going? Where are we? Where are we going? Where are we? Where are you going? Where are we headed, man? I'm ready. Where are we going? It's Thursday. We are in this war. That's not an option. Behind all the human forces, there are angelic forces, both angels of God and angels of Satan, that are at work. And human history is to be explained by the interplay of all these forces. Now, why we are significant as Christians is because God has given to us the weapons by which we can intervene in this spiritual war. Governments have armies and weapons that deal with other nations, but only the Christian church has the weapon that will intervene in the spiritual realm in the heavenlies. And you understand, the one who wins in the heavenlies ultimately determines the course of history. So the most significant thing you can do in history, in a sense, is be an intercessor and pray through the spiritual issues in the heavenlies that will determine the history of nations on earth. If you're part of the kingdom of God, you are at war with the kingdom of Satan. That's not something you can decide. You just better learn how to fight, because if you don't, you're going to be a casualty.